Following the release of Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne in Japan, a re-release went into production, Nocturne Maniacs. According to Atlas co-founder Koji Okada, a member of the Nocturne team was a fan of Devil May Cry, even after DMC2 came out, and suggested including Dante from said series in Maniacs since his job as a demon hunter would fit quite naturally into the demon-filled world of SMT. The team made a short video to present to Capcom which was Dante's first encounter with the Demi-Fiend. Capcom loved it and allowed him to be included. Dante's role is to obstruct Demi-Fiend in the Labyrinth of Amal which leads to the true demon ending. He can then be recruited by the player, offering to join for only one Maka if they win a coin toss. Players of DMC2 who know that the coin has heads on both sides can use this knowledge to win, which is pretty damn cool. In return for Dante's inclusion, SMT character designer Kazuma Kaneko was brought on to design Dante and Virgil's Devil Trigger forms for DMC3. These designs are still used whenever their DMC3 incarnations appear in a game, showing up as recently as Marvel vs Capcom Infinite in 2017, with Kaneko being appropriately credited for his work. It's a shame Dante doesn't have Devil Trigger in Nocturne. Depending on when it was decided that Kaneko would design the DTs, they could have used Nocturne to tease DMC3 side of the collaboration. In a way, he might have fit better in Digital Devil Saga, where the characters transform into demons rather than recruit or summon them. Maniacs was the basis for the Western release, known as Nocturne in North America and Lucifer's Call in Europe. The PAL version is where the infamous Featuring Dante sticker came from, plastering it on the cover alongside Dante himself in a unique render. On the one hand, it's a shame we didn't get one of the many fantastic art pieces from the game as a unique cover, but on the other hand, I love the dedication to the bit. Four years later, another edition, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne Maniacs Chronicle Edition, was bundled with the Japanese limited edition of Devil Summoner 2, Raido Kuzunoha vs King Abaddon, swapping out Dante for the titular Raido. His role is identical to Dante's, but a few skills were changed, such as gaining the Vital Pierce skill, something Dante was lacking despite being an absolute necessity for the battle with Lucifer. With the announcement of the game's HD re-release, a lot of fans were disappointed to see Raido in the trailer in place of Dante. This disappointment was short-lived, however, as Dante was announced to be available as DLC three weeks later. Dante appeared alongside Nero and V from DMC5 in ST Liberation DX2 in 2019, so negotiations to get Dante back in likely began around then, or at least that was when the relationship between the two companies was re-established, later utilised to get Dante back in Nocturne. It's amusing that the original character is DLC while his replacement is in the base game. It would be like if the next remaster of Yakuza 4 offered the original Tanimura actor as DLC. My guess as to why Dante was made DLC is the same reason I believe Netherrealm hasn't had a guest fighter in a base roster since 2011. They would presumably have to share profits from the base game with the rights holder of the guest, but relegating them to DLC means they only have to share profits from that, giving Atlas slash Netherrealm a larger portion of the profits from the game overall. That's just a guess, of course. I'm not a lawyer. All that's left now is to hope that Dante will be available at an affordable price, and that he'll now be equipped with Pierce and that we'll finally be getting Ruben Langdon as DMC2 Dante, Get going. and that Round Trip can deal physical damage instead of electric. He's throwing a massive sword that doesn't have an electric element, so how does it deal electric damage and not physical? 